Hello everyone, I'm Rod Wortham and welcome to this episode of Race Face Driver Updates. We had 12 drivers seeing action over the weekend, so let's get right to the results. Anthony Alfredo was at Dover International Speedway for the NASCAR Cup Series Dry Dean 400. Let's catch up with Anthony for a post-race recap. Well, unfortunate day for us here at the Monster Mile. We had a pretty solid SpeedyCash.com Ford Mustang. The guys worked hard all day long. We kept getting it better uh, and had something to race with at the end. We were competing uh, around 25th most of the day, uh, racing our teammates and, and having a solid run, developing a great notebook, but unfortunately uh, got turned in one and two on a restart and spun into the inside wall. So really frustrating that happened for really no reason, but we were able to get back out there and take it on P28, which I don't even know how we how we still finished 28th, but I'm glad we did. Happy we were able to get back out there and finish. There's no quit in this front row motorsports team. We'll get ready for Circuit of the Americas next week. That should be a fun one. Up next for Anthony, Circuit of Americas, where NASCAR will make its historic debut on the 3.41 mile road course. Catch all the action live on FS1 at 2.30 Eastern time on Sunday, May 23rd. We had three drivers that saw action in the Arkham Menard Series 125 lap race at Dover, starting with Jesse Love, who was in his number 25 Mobile One Toyota with Venturini Motorsports. Jesse had an engine failure, ending his day just 25 laps into the event. Jesse's race at Winchester Speedway was canceled due to weather and a tire issue, and that race will be rescheduled for later this year. Up next for Jesse, Arkham Menard Series at Toledo Speedway on May 22nd. Connor Mozak made his ARCA debut with Young's Motorsports in the number two Nick Taylor Chevrolet Camaro. The plan? Have a solid qualifying attempt, run all the laps, and bring home the car in one piece. As we know, there's little room for mistakes on the Monster Mile. Connor qualified P14th and ran a great race, staying out of trouble, competing all the laps, and brought home a top 10 finish in seventh place. Great debut, Connor. Up next for Connor, Trans Am, Lime Rock Park on May 29th through the 31st. Joey East was also making his first start at the Monster Mile, and the number 54 DGR Ford was fast right out of the box. Qualifying was set by practice speed and Joey shined as he was P2 in practice, giving him a front row starting position. Joey ran in the top five for most of the race and ran as high as second, but a late race restart resulted in Joey getting loosed. He made an awesome save, keeping it out of the wall and battled his way back up to a top 10 finish in eighth. Up next for Joey, Arkham Menards West, at Sonoma Raceway on June 5th with Nate Clower Motorsports. Grant Thompson was making his super late model debut at Wisconsin International Speedway with Casey Johnson Racing. Let's check in with the driver for a post-race recap provided by Speed 51. I'm happy, I just, I can't thank Casey Johnson and his old team enough for just one heck of a race car today. It was a rocket ship. Real hard race, you know, 60 laps, not a whole lot of time. But I started on the pole, uh, let some laps early on, and kind of got a little tight in the center uh, halfway through the race, and Casey Johnson got by us. But uh, I can't thank Dalton Zare. He, he drove me clean, and me and him raced side by side for laps. But, uh, you know, Super Lame Mile debut, Tundra debut. So, I mean, I'll take a second place. That, that was one heck of a race. I know that, you know, they push it from green to checkered, and, uh, you know, it's it's constant racing. You know, there wasn't really a lot that we kind of paced and stuff, but, uh, you know, they race hard. We, we banged doors a little bit with a couple of them, but, uh, you know, we'll just take away from the day that, you know, they're real hard racers, and, uh, you know, we'll, we'll keep that in mind. Wow, great things in store for this young man. Up next for Grant, back to the Tundra Super Late Model Series at Marshfield Motor Speedway on June 12th. Bryce Bizanson was at State Line Speedway in his number seven Friends of Jacqueline Jefferson Racing Ford. Bryce qualified fifth, had to start eighth with the invert that saw 22 cars take the green flag. Let's check in with Bryce for his take on the race. What's going on guys? I just got back from State Line, Idaho. Had a race down there at State Line Speedway. Uh, 
seven car down there. It was pretty fast in practice. We actually, I went down Thursday for practice and Saturday was uh, qualifying in the race. Ended up qualifying fifth. Uh, it was a really good spot. It was 20, 22 car field, I believe. So we were right up there. And the race was 150 laps. Uh, by lap 10, I got shuffled to the back. Just some banging didn't go my way. A lot of stuff didn't go my way there. Had to pull off track about lap 40. Luckily, I still didn't lose a lap, but I ended up going back to like 16th. Then throughout the race, I battled my way back up to around sixth place, and that's where I finished. You know, not the best finish, not the worst finish. You know, you know at that point, there was a lot of things wrong with my car, so our goal was just, you know, to get to the finish line. That's what we did. I want to thank the Friends of Jacqueline Foundation, Jefferson Racing, just, and just everyone who made this possible. Up next for Bryce, South Sound Speedway, May 22nd. Joe Valento was at Langley Speedway with only one thing in mind, get in some laps for the upcoming Cars Tour race in June. Let's check in with the driver of the DGR Ford Mustang for a post-race recap on how the weekend went in Hampton, Virginia. Hey guys, Joe Valento. Just got back home from Langley Speedway this weekend. Went down there for a 100 lap local race. Uh, it was a good weekend overall for us. Uh, got to learn a lot about the track and its different characteristics and its unique way to get around the track fast. Um, ended up with a top 10 finish, which was a solid night for us. Really was just went down there to learn about how to save our tires and manage so that we'd be there at the end. Uh, I think we found something that's gonna work for us when we come back with the Cars Tour, so excited to go back and apply it there, but just can't think all the guys on the David Gillen racing crew enough for all the hard effort this weekend. Ford Performance, Nitro Lubricants, Nap Auto Parts, the Friends of Jacqueline Foundation, and Race Face Brand Development. Up next for Joe, Cars Tour at Caraway Speedway on Saturday. Cassidy Hines was at All-American Speedway in her number 88 Nate Clower Motorsports prepared Ford for twin 25 lap features. Let's check in with Cassidy for a post-race recap. Hi everyone, I raced my Nate Clower Ford Pro Late Model at All-American Speedway this weekend and I feel like we did pretty good. After going there for a learning experience and logging laps, I qualified in fourth and I finished in the top 10 in both mains. I'd like to thank all of my sponsors, Fort Worth Screen Printing, LL Acousticals, Frontier Restoration, the Friends of Jacqueline Foundation, Race Face Brand Development, Driven Race Gear, and Commit to Fitness for all of their help and support. I will be racing my pro truck at Colorado National Speedway on May 30th. Up next for Cassidy, pro trucks at Colorado National Speedway on May 30th. Gavin Graham was also pulling double duty in his Kurt Brandt Motorsports number 38 Pro Truck. On night one at Five Flags Speedway, he started by winning his heat race, had to start second due to the dice roll, but took the lead on lap one and never looked back, parking it in victory lane. On to Montgomery Motor Speedway. Different track, same results. As a young 13-year-old made it five wins in a row. Up next for Gavin, Pro Trucks at Auburndale Speedway is six in a row in his future? Well, we'll have to see, but I would not bet against him. Jake Bowman was competing in twin double features at All-American Speedway in the Pro Late Model Division. Jake qualified seventh, and in the first twin 35 lap race, he started ninth with the invert and finished in third. In the second race, he started sixth, but had a mechanical issue on lap 11 ending his day early. Up next for Jake, SRL Pro Late Models at All-American Speedway on Saturday. Caden Honeycutt pulled double duty in his dirt late model in the state of Louisiana. Let's check in with Caden for a weekend recap. Hey everybody, it's Caden Honeycutt here. Uh, just give you guys a recap of this weekend. And the dirt late model in Louisiana, uh, first we went to Sabine Motor Speedway on Friday night. And uh, we got fourth in our heat race and finished fifth in the feature. We just struggled pretty much the whole night. Um, so we just went to Boot Hill on Saturday and got help from Mr. Ronnie Stuckey, the builder of uh, Black Diamond Chassis. And he helped us a lot before a hot lap started on Saturday night. 
and I can't tell you guys how much it improved in a complete 360 of what we had on Friday night. We went from, you know, struggling, or digging in the racetrack, bottomed out, to spanking in the heat race, won our heat race, started fifth in the 3,000 win feature, and we finished fifth. You know, it was, uh, it was a little tough to pass. Um, there wasn't much passing going on. It was really one lane down on the tires, so I will definitely take it, um, considering the people in the top, I would say in the top 12 have an average of five years of racing dirt late models. So I will definitely take it. We're going to move on to Caraway in the car store next weekend. And uh, we're going to get through finals here starting this week, focusing on school. And uh, we'll see you guys at Caraway. Up next for Caden, Cars Tour at Caraway Speedway on Saturday. Landon Cox pulled double duty at Metro Atlanta QMA. In race one, he finished third after spinning while leading, and in race two, he led every lap on his way to the victory. Landon also set another track record in the rookie blue class, as he now holds track records at every track in Georgia. Up next for Landon, USAC National Race at Roadrunner QMA in Albuquerque, New Mexico, May 21st through the 23rd. Other drivers seeing action this weekend include Sheldon Creed, who will be making his first start at Circuit of Americas in the NASCAR Camping World Truck Series on Saturday the 22nd. Brody Moore will compete in race number four of the 5150 Junior Late Model Series, where he sets third in points heading into Saturday's race. And Carter Whalen will be at the USAC National Race at Roadrunner QMA in Albuquerque, New Mexico on May 21st through the 23rd. Carter will race his Landon Cox Racing Heavy Honda, Heavy 160, and his new Heavy World Formula. I know he's looking forward to that. That's it for this week's Race Face Driver Updates. And remember, if you have missed any of our shows, you can get caught up at raceface.tv on demand. Don't forget to follow us on social media, Make sure to check out the Speed Zone Race Store for the latest in apparel. As always, we encourage you to support local racing in your communities. We will be back next week with more from your favorite race face drivers. So go out there and have a great race week. I'm Rod Wortham. Thanks for watching.